going to say 30,000. <laughs> this is uh, Skeena, the heights. This is uh, right now the largest passive house in Canada under construction. It's 85 suites. We're about two months from construction. We were discussing how we're going to airtight this building for our airtightness test. Unfortunately, wood frame construction is really tough to do airtightness uh, halfway through. So we're going to test it at the, at the end, and we're really relying on our trades and our airtightness pro to make sure it's airtight. And if you look at that building, you'll see that blue is SEGA. And the little blue that's wrapping the floor lines is part of our air barrier. Um, this is actually the PHPP, or the, the design PH model that we use to create our thermal envelope in our passive house planning package. And you'll see there's some, down at the bottom, there's some things that extend below that. That's the elevators down into the parkade. And trying to do thermal bridge-free elevators down into a parkade, it's a bit of a challenge. We did it by insulating on the inside, and all of our rails are attached through a four-inch block of wood, so we'd have eliminated all the thermal bridge down in the parkade. So this is the metrics of how this building is stacking up. Passive house is heating demand of 15. We're predicting eight for this building right now. Our Achilles heel is primary energy, which you saw was 19. Here's how we're doing the ventilation system. Again, this is about value engineering. We had a collaborative approach here. We had an, uh, the, uh, the uh, developer and the builder at the table. We ended up with this idea. So what we're doing is we're feeding five suites with this on one single HRV. And to keep the ventilation system real simple, all the suites have control of the same HRV. Uh, so there's no control issues. This is what you get from passive house. This is that energy balance equation. And you'll see that the orange box there is the internal heat gains. When you get the insulation levels up to the levels we're doing this building, 50% of the heat you need is just generated by being inside the building. Uh, so there's very little additional heat needed. This is another building we're building. This is up in Smithers. We just started construction about um, three weeks ago on this one. This is up north. This is a northern passive house. Bigger challenges. The biggest one is probably uh, how do you stop the HRVs from freezing? So we have some electric preheat on these. It's been a, our biggest Achilles heel that we've been working with. Um, this is the sort of very efficient plan we're able to get up north. Unfortunately, in Vancouver, we can't do efficient plans because we have a planning department. But uh, we can do simple plans up north. So this is a very simple plan we managed to come up with. All the units face mostly to the south, and we've kept the servicing to the north. Um, these are kind of the factors of where we're at. We're about R55 on the walls, about R76 on the roof, about 33 on the floor. Uh, and then we're using these triple glazed um, windows. They're a Euroline Thermal Plus window. Uh, so, and the key is that they have these beautiful frames that are insulated well. That's actually the weakest part of the, of the window. And you actually install the window. I think there's a detail coming up. We actually over-insulate the window when you got these northern climates in order to try to keep it uh, done. And that's the energy balance equation for this particular building. And again, you'll see about 50% of it is just coming from use in the building. And that's because you've created such a good envelope that you don't need much to go after that. And you don't put a lot in with the sun, just a bit. This is the wall system we developed. It was all about cost. Um, it worked on our Skeena project. I can't say it worked so well on this project because this thing came in way over budget, way over what our cost consultant told us it was going to come in at. Uh, however, we're, we're, we are building it. Uh, our wall is a standard 2 by 6 framed exterior wall. We're putting, uh, in this case, 6 inches of EPS on the inside of that and then uh, a 4 inch 2 by 4 interior cavity wall on top of that. You can see all these details of eliminate all the thermal bridging between the footings, between the floors. All of that is gone, and the detailing and the thinking it takes to do that is quite important. You got a lot of taping that you're going to be doing with Sega tape uh, to get our air tightness envelope together, and this is kind of how we're doing it. This is one of our tricky little details of uh, load bearing walls. We're actually decided to insulate on top of the slab and then put uh, plywood on top of that, and we're able to do that with uh, a product that we found that has an in integral batten right into it. Um, this is how we're installing the windows. You can see there's some over-insulation on the outside of the window frames uh, to try to, again, eliminate all of those thermal bridging pieces that we see. And we have done thermal bridging models on every one of these details as part of the exercise. The beauty of it is, once you've done it once, you can use it in the next building, or the next building, or the next building. And uh, through Passfuss Canada, we're going to try to create a catalog of those details. Um, this is, again, how we've decided to install our window. It's about the middle of the wall. That's the best place for thermal performance of a window. Um, and uh, I 
sheet, sorry, that's, yeah, so that's our over-insulation detail that we were talking about. What we found is when we do our details, really important to put warm, cold, warm, cold. It keeps your thinking <laughs> going, and where are your air barriers has got to be very clear. So this is, again, the same strategy for HRVs. We're using a high-efficiency HRV. This is a all HRV. It's about 92% efficient. Uh, we're going to use it on uh, two floors of the building. That might change because there's a brand new Zender out we're hoping to get. Our hot water system, we're going to use uh, heat pump hot water. This is getting away from gas, getting away from carbon. We're now going to move to heat pump hot water in all the rest of our buildings from here on in. This is a, a unit that uh, produces, uh, uses CO2 as a refrigerant, and it actually produces 180 degree water in one step. It's an amazing unit. Um, so this is our basic uh, metrics now of the Dictai housing project. You can see primary energy renewable. We can talk about what that is. It's a kind of an esoteric concept in Passive House. That's our Achilles heel in all these buildings. It's always has been, and it looks like it always will be in everything we're doing. And that is a, an idea that um, you multiply various, when you use the energy is important as, as how you use it. Because if you're using it to cool a building and you can generate on the roof that day, it's, there's no storage loss. But if you're trying to use it generated in, gen, in, uh, in, say, August, and you want to use it to heat in December, you've got this long storage period. So anyways, we're doing a lot of these buildings. I'd encourage you to come out. We're going to be building a passive house, two modules. One's passive house, one's code. They're going to sit in the Olympic Square. They're getting unveiled on Thursday at noon. You're welcome to join us. Each one's going to have about a ton of ice in it, I believe. And we're going to see which one melts first and when. And you're going to, I think you're going to guess. We're going to have a little contest to guess. And anyway, so that's what's going on. That's our public awareness campaign. So that's what we're trying to do. Thanks.